Over the past 10 years, Far Cry has been on a steady decline. The titles that followed Far Cry 3 were good games, but they were all too similar and lacked innovation. Far Cry 4-6 simply regurgitated the Far Cry 3 formula with slight tweaks and changes. A new mechanic was added here and there, or a new mode was bolted on that didn't change the core gameplay. After clearing out outposts, adding points to our skill trees, and ticking off endless map markers, players are getting fed up with Far Cry. But it wasn't always like this. Back in the mid-2000s, Ubisoft made a series of great Far Cry games that weren't afraid to take risks and experiment. Far Cry Instincts blended stealth, shooting and abilities to make a game that stood out compared to other shooters at the time, and Far Cry 2 created a realistic open world where guns deteriorate and jam and we have to take medication to keep our malaria infection at bay. With the exception of an awful Wii game in 2006, early Far Cry showed more innovation than we've seen in the last decade from Ubisoft, and we all know what happens to franchises that don't give us anything new. <laughs> this got me thinking, if the early Far Cry games were innovative, how did the series evolve to the repetitive Far Cry we know today? And what made Far Cry 3 so special that Ubisoft are using its template almost 12 years later? By looking back at Ubisoft's earlier work, we'll examine how each game evolved up to Far Cry 3. I'll be reviewing each game except Far Cry Vengeance to see how they hold up and if old Far Cry is still great today. But first we need to understand the confusing and overly convoluted history of the series so this video makes sense. It's time for a history lesson. I promise it'll be a fun history lesson. Hello? This is a quick rundown of Far Cry's history leading up to Predator using several articles from the mid-2000s. But if you want to know more, I'll link a few videos in the description. The first Far Cry game was developed by Crytek and published by Ubisoft. As we know from Crytek's work on Crisis, their games were designed to test high-end PCs at the time of their release, and even many years later. Far Cry was no exception. It included groundbreaking visuals, huge open levels, advanced physics and dynamic lighting. I'm not going to pretend I know what advanced physics and dynamic lighting meant in 2004, but back then, Far Cry was considered a next-gen experience. Following Far Cry's release, Crytek signed a deal with EA and moved on to make Crisis. But as Ubisoft saw Far Cry's success, they commissioned a console version of the game and began developing Far Cry Instincts. Ubisoft Montreal were the developers, but for simplicity, I'll be referring to them as Ubisoft. As Far Cry was designed for high-end PCs, Ubisoft couldn't port the game over to the Xbox due to hardware limitations of consoles at the time. So instead, they remade the entire game. The large open maps in the PC version were redesigned to be more linear, while Ubisoft added new mechanics to leave their mark on the franchise. A year later in 2006, Ubisoft developed a sequel to Instincts called Far Cry Instincts Evolution for the Xbox. Evolution was released after the Xbox 360, and to capitalize on this new hardware, Ubisoft released a third Far Cry game called Far Cry Instincts Predator. Shortly afterwards, Ubisoft bought the rights to Far Cry and let them make the games we know today. Now this is where things get confusing. Far Cry Instincts Predator is a remastered version of Far Cry Instincts and Far Cry Instincts Evolution, bundled into one package for the Xbox 360. So it's basically a remaster of Ubisoft's remake of Crytek's original Far Cry game, plus a remaster of the sequel to the remake of the original Far Cry made by Ubisoft using the original work of Crytek. There, that wasn't so bad. Predator is the game we're looking at today, so really this is a double review of Instincts and Instincts Evolution. First up, As with modern Far Cry, the early games gave us different ways to approach an objective. We could approach an encounter from the front using vehicles with a turret for extra firepower, or from the side by ziplining into an arena to get the drop on our enemies. Then in combat we could attack from the front all guns blazing, or play tactically by sitting back. In Instincts we don't quite have this level of freedom as the game is more linear. Rather than having different routes to reach level, we're forced down a critical path that links encounters together. However, once we reach these encounters, the classic Far Cry gameplay is still here. We can move around the side of an arena to scope out our surroundings or sniper enemies from a high point, or we can sneak around the back. You can see here, I'm swimming underwater to avoid being detected before popping out behind everyone to flank them. This sounds similar to modern games that have outposts or bandit camps and different ways to clear them. We'll usually have the option to go in through the roof or sneak in through the basement or attack from the back or the front. But a lot of the time in modern gaming, these outposts are reused or tweaked slightly to pad out a huge map making them feel similar. After playing one, we know what to expect from the next. 
The difference in instincts is that each encounter is handcrafted and designed to challenge us in different ways. Some encounters have cover while others are more open, some have enemies hiding in buildings or patrolling a set route, and each encounter has a variety of enemy types to put pressure on us. Shotgunners to attack up close, rifles for mid-range damage, and snipers sat back for big hits. We also fight a tactical enemy later on that pushes forward as a unit and flanks us in interesting ways, mixing everything up again. It's not quite as distinctive as something like Roller Drome or Doom Eternal, where we have to deal with each enemy type in a specific way, but it does enough to avoid repetition and makes each encounter challenging. In games around this time, and especially Far Cry 1, this challenge was often frustrating. Far Cry 1 is punishingly difficult at times, where enemies somehow detect us when we're prone crawling behind them, or one-shot us from across the map with auto-aim. Plus all the retro shooter bullshits where enemies are placed in stupid positions and shoot us in the back before we even know they're there. Ubisoft wanted to make instincts less hardcore compared to Far Cry 1, while retaining the tactical gameplay that people loved. They designed the game to be challenging, to stop us running into an encounter with no thoughts, but not too challenging, where everything feels stacked against us. Enemies deal high damage, which means we have to thin out their numbers before we charge in. And this is where Instincts is at its best. Ubisoft has used their previous work on Splinter Cell in 2002 to create stealth gameplay that's better than modern games in one big way. At first though, this difference isn't clear, as the stealth is similar to Far Cry today. We use binoculars to mark enemies, which then tracks their movements on our minimap. It's not as fluid as modern Far Cry, as we can't tag targets to track their movements on screen. Instead, our minimap shows us the enemy's position and changes their colour depending on their state. If they're green, they're not aware we're in the area, orange means they're alerted, and red means they're actively trying to kill us. It's something you get used to after a while, but compared to modern Far Cry, it's frustrating in those early hours. Things get more interesting when we use our branch trap, which is one of the best ideas I've seen in quite some time. Basically, we coil back this spiky branch, and lure in an enemy by throwing a rock or shooting our weapon. Then, when they walk in front of the trap, the branch springs outwards and kills the enemy with a satisfying thwack. Watching an enemy walk into a branch trap completely oblivious made me laugh every time it happened. It was just as incredible the first time as it was the hundredth. Now this is where stealth becomes different from modern games, because Instincts doesn't gamify this system in any way. The stealth meter from the original Far Cry has been abandoned, and there's nothing on screen to show us how close we are to detection, or how much noise we're making. Sure, we can hide in vegetation to remain undetected, but there's never random patches of grass that we move between, and we never see an enemy's vision cone. This change makes gameplay extremely intense, as we never know if it's safe to push forwards. We never know if an enemy is watching our position, or if somebody nearby has a direct line of sight on us. An enemy might be searching for us, and we just have to sit there, wait it out, and hope the bush we're hiding in has us covered. We can't use our modern gaming tricks to outwit the enemy, like sneaking past them if they're looking slightly out of sight. The enemy AI is intelligent, and they will spot us in realistic ways. They'll see the slightest of movements out the corner of their eye, or hear the rustle of leaves as we move through the jungle. In combat, their intelligence isn't always as strong, as enemies run in front of our aim or stand out in the open waiting to be shot. But in stealth, definitely. I mean, I had times where enemies were searching for me right in front of my eyes, as I lay prone on the jungle floor, anxiously waiting there convinced they would find me, palm sweating, sitting on the edge of my seat. It was so good that it made me question why these mechanics aren't used in Far Cry today. Far Cry 7, take note. The stealth gameplay makes instincts slow paced compared to other FPS games, and if you don't enjoy sitting in a bush for 5 minutes, then this probably isn't for you. These slower moments are absolutely essential though, as they make the FPS gameplay special. Because we spent so long playing cautiously, it's liberating when we finally open up with our weapons. It's like we're driving a fast car, and finally have a stretch of open road to ram down the accelerator and go. We'll go from a level with wide open arenas where we need to use stealth, to a level with tight corridors that plays more like a traditional FPS. We'll fight through military bases, old mines, science facilities, and a luxury villa where the game narrows its focus and lets the gunplay shine. So far, there's one thing we've not discussed, and this is arguably the biggest part of the game. This is where we get wildly different from Far Cry 1. In Instincts, we have a new mechanic in the form of feral abilities. The feral abilities are unique to the series, but you can see how they might have influenced later games, especially how our feral attack is similar to the takedowns in Far Cry 3. 
When we first unlock the feral attack, it doesn't reach its full potential. Really, we want to charge across the arena chaining takedowns together, but we can't do that because we can't sprint. We can't click in the left thumbstick like we can today, so we're forced to slowly move forwards at our base movement speed. I actually made a note saying how disappointed I was with this, and how a remake with modern controls could unlock its full potential. I thought it was a shame that Ubisoft didn't quite execute this as well as the rest of the game. Well, it turns out, this comment was short-sighted, as Ubisoft has thought about this in great detail. Shortly after unlocking our Feral Attack, we unlock a new ability called Feral Speed and a Crackdown-style Super Jump. By pressing down Y, we can sprint through an arena and link up our Feral Attacks, or we can leap at an enemy with a Super Jump and cause death from above. It gets so ridiculous by the end of the game, when we basically turn into a Super Soldier, batting enemies away with our Feral Attacks and charging into battle with Feral Speed, wielding a turret. It's a great example of Ubisoft throwing away the rulebook to make sure we have as much fun as possible. Most games that use this mechanic would add a movement penalty to make the game more balanced. Not here though. Ubisoft wanted to make us feel more powerful by the end of the game, and this perfectly achieves that. In fact, Instincts is designed so we're more like prey in the early game, where we're vulnerable and have to take care, only to become a predator by the end, where the enemies are vulnerable against us and they have to take care. And hey look, that's the name of the game! Outside of combat, these new abilities also enhance stealth, rather than taking over from it. We unlock an ability called Feral Senses that lets us see in the dark, track an enemy's path, and later on highlight their bodies similar to the night vision goggles in the original Far Cry. Using our new night vision, we can stealth kill enemies in complete darkness before they even know we're there. That is, until they turn up with flashlights and ruin our strategy. And you know how we can hide in vegetation to avoid being detected? Well, this actually goes both ways too, because just as the enemy can't see us, we also can't see them. Usually our view is blocked by dense foliage. Now though, this is no longer a problem as we can activate feral senses, see the enemy outline and easily take our shot. Plus feral senses can detect enemies where the binoculars can't, like through building walls. Without feral senses in this situation, we would never have known there was an enemy hiding here, which could have ruined our attack if they came out and shot us in the back. When we unlock these abilities, we see a serious shift in tone between the first and the second half of the game. In the first half, we start off being a stealthy commando, slowly taking down mercs, only for the second half to go full sci-fi. I know the original Far Cry had sci-fi elements and mutants, but it's an odd choice considering most shooters at the time were either military or sci-fi, or military sci-fi. Aside from the shift in tone, there's a ton of variety throughout the campaign to keep everything interesting, from wave defense sections where we defend a point, to vehicle sections on land, sea and air, to an active volcano that shakes our screen as it erupts in the background. Actually, I'm not sure I'm explaining this very well. Let me try and recreate what it's like playing both halves of the game. So, the first half is like this. Okay, easy does it. Nice one. There we go. But then, the second half is like this. Go, 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 plant the bomb. Blow up the generator. Sure. wheel the P90. Mutants in coming from all angles. Shit, Get shit, on shit. The, bike. the volcanoes are erupting again. Shit, mutants. Play in the road and abomination boss fight. Ah! While these moments are fun, they abandon the incredible stealth mechanics from earlier in the game. It's generally not possible to use stealth towards the end of the game, as most arenas don't have vegetation and traps become less effective. There's more enemies on screen to deal with at once, so it's not worth setting traps to take out two mutants, just to see five more run towards us. On top of this, the mutants don't create compelling gameplay, as they're basically cannon fodder. They stand out in the open waiting to be shot, and they rarely challenge us as their aim is terrible. I get that Ubisoft wanted to make us feel powerful, but Instincts is at its best as a strategic game like Far Cry 1. I guess the abilities help, but still. The narrative is stupid. That's okay. It doesn't matter. We play as Jack Carver, an ex-member of the Navy who's trapped on a tropical island that houses a dark secret. A mad scientist called Dr. Krieger is trying to unlock man's primordial instincts, and we're his latest test subject. If that sounds pretty silly, that's because it is. The premise is like one of those cheesy horror films from the 50s, and it could easily be called something like... Ubisoft tries to make the narrative more grounded compared to Far Cry 1, by showing Jack lose control of his powers throughout the game. Overall though, I found everything pretty goofy, as the game showed its age. This doesn't concern your agency, it's my insurance! Spare me, Radich. I'll have nothing to bargain with! I'm dead! 
But we can see the origins of Far Cry's storytelling here, as we have a main villain to overthrow, and everything is in first person. I will say that the level of quality we have for villains in later titles isn't included here. There's a character called Crow, for example, and he's basically Krieger's second in command. I could never take Crow seriously because he felt like a cartoon character, like early on when he flies down in his helicopter to smack talkers and then flies off. I know it's important for a villain to have screen time as this helps develop their character and adds weight to our mission, but not like this. Crow might as well be twirling a big moustache while laughing like a maniac. The narrative does enough to push us through the game and it really isn't too bad compared to some. Unfortunately though, the same can't be said for Ubisoft's next Far Cry game. Far Cry Instinct's evolution starts with an arm steal gone wrong, almost as if Ubisoft took a page from Rockstar's notebook. After being far too easily seduced by a lady called Cade, we join her to oversee the deal with the local government on another Far Cry tropical island. Our main villain in evolution, Semaru, attacks the arms deal killing the local governor and frames us for his murder. We then spend the game clearing our name and taking down Semaru. The premise is solid actually, and I appreciated how it was more grounded compared to Instincts. There's less sci-fi themes, and we don't battle mutants or abominations or mini velociraptors. This makes evolution feel more like modern Far Cry, especially Far Cry 4 towards the end when we fight through ancient temples. The biggest problem with the narrative though is its execution. It is so cliched and terrible that I was laughing at points I really wasn't supposed to be laughing at. Like the opening of the game that starts with a movie trope that's been parodied to death by this point. How the hell did I end up here? I mean, there might as well be a freeze frame and a record scratch here. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. The writing also has a few rough patches, like an odd attempt at humour early on. It was paradise found, if you ignored all the heavily armed pirates. Or a woeful line that would work in a light-hearted 80s action film, but doesn't work in this more serious Far Cry game. Purge my soul? I'm gonna purge his goddamn ass. Not every part of the narrative is like this, but it's hard not to be disappointed by these issues, especially during the ending of the game. The ending is a massive letdown and comes off as rushed. Semaru forces Kay to double cross us, as she can only save her life if she takes ours. Fine, that's quite a good twist to our drama to the end of the game. No problems here. But then, when we take down Semaru and finally confront Cade, nothing ever comes of it. We make an offbeat comment about how humans are imperfect, and then we cut to black. That's it. I can't help but think Ubisoft will push for time, as there's only a six month gap between both games. Ubisoft might have worked on both games simultaneously, so development might have been longer than this. I couldn't find any specific details online, but it looks like it was a quick turnaround by anyone's standards. This could be the main reason why Evolution is more like an expansion than a sequel. Evolution is short and takes around 6 hours to beat, and it doesn't add enough new features to make it stand out. The amount of new weapons can be counted on one hand, and includes molotovs, pipe bombs and a dart gun. There's a few new vehicles here and there, but we don't have a new main weapon to make a lasting impact. The dart gun doesn't fill this role, as it's an idea that only works on paper. We're supposed to use the dart gun to disable an enemy's feral abilities that tips the odds of combat back in our favour. But the problem is, these enemies are never powerful enough for us to use this approach. These enemies also use the dart gun to disable our powers, which is another good idea. But then we can easily avoid being hit if we keep moving, like we do in every single FPS game. I can see this weapon working in PvP, but it needed more development time in the campaign. Aside from the dart gun, the biggest disappointment comes with our new feral abilities. It's baffling that in a game called Instinct's Evolution, we barely see our powers evolve in any way. We have an increased super jump height, and only one new power compared to Instincts. One new power that lets us... <laughs> climb up walls. The worst parts of Evolution are due to this disappointment, in the lack of new weapons, abilities, and some strange moments in the narrative. But in actual fact, everything else is worth our time. Ubisoft made positive changes to the overall experience by adding new mechanics and changing how each level was designed. The pipe bombs, for example, are a great addition as they link in with another new mechanic in an incredible way. You know how Far Cry has radio towers that we climb up to reveal more parts of the map? Well, instead of climbing towers, in Evolution, we blow them up. Using pipe bombs or other explosives, we can destroy a tower leg and watch the tower topple to the ground, crushing anyone in its path. 
we can stealthily plant pipe bombs at the base of a tower and then watch the tower fall before anybody knows we're there. A fallen tower also changes the battlefield as the wreckage stays in place long after it's fallen. When a tower falls we can use it as impromptu cover and if there's a weapon we want at the top of the tower and we're feeling especially lazy, we can blow up the tower and watch the weapon fall to the floor. Each level has also been expanded to be more open like Far Cry 1. The first level in particular is a standout in the game where we complete three objectives on three separate islands. We can choose which order to beat the objectives and approach them in any way we want. We can use vehicles to zip between each island and attack any part of the shoreline or avoid vehicles altogether to remain undetected. It's completely different to instincts as we choose how to get to our objective rather than following a linear path. Other maps are also extended to be more vertical to take advantage of our increased jump height. We'll descend a mountain to attack a fishing village at night, or battle across a farm in a valley as we jump up and down its different tiers. It adds an impressive amount of scale to each level, as we often survey our landscape from a high point before making our way down to our objective. It is far more impressive than the level design and instincts. There are times though where the game is more linear with handcrafted encounters that have a single way to beat them, but just as in the first game, these moments are all varied and were completely worth including. One objective asks us to defend a shack as enemies attack from the windows, and by far the best level takes place high above the jungle floor. We navigate through the treetops over ramshackle bridges or derelict airplane parts, all while enemies jump at us from all angles. There's still the same issue with enemy AI in combat, as they sometimes walk into our line of fire, but the best parts of instincts still shine through in evolution. The stealth mechanics, the FPS gameplay, and the abilities, with some great improvements to level design. Aside from the awful textures that come with the technology of this time, and some outdated facial animations, both games have an impressive presentation with outstanding vegetation that's varied and dense. Ubisoft took Crytek's work and created their first iteration of Far Cry, with a narrative told completely in first person, new abilities, and improved stealth mechanics. Predator is different to modern Far Cry, but the main mechanics are still here in full force. Being able to approach an encounter in different ways creates incredible gameplay moments, and it's easy to see why so many games use this approach today, even if we're fatigued by it. Far Cry Instinct's Predator is an incredibly well-made game, as Ubisoft thought about how each part fits together perfectly. Evolution could have done more to expand the franchise, but the six hours we have are enjoyable, even if they're short-lived. And it's for these reasons that Far Cry Instinct's Predator is still great. If you want to play a streamlined Far Cry game that isn't weighed down by the AAA systems we have today, then definitely check this out. Next up, 